excited to play Ole Miss here at home. Uh, early morning game. I'm, I'm happy we played uh, last week early. It'll prepare us a little bit better uh, for this week. Uh, really good football team. Obviously well coached with Coach Kiffin. Uh, seems like this year – a little bit different. They've always played well on defense, but you're looking at number one rush defense in the country and number one against points given allowed in the country. Very, very good. Uh, their front is deep, very good. They're very, very uh, good at uh, every position on the on the D-line. Their linebackers are playing well. Uh, Pooh Paul's our leading uh, tackler. He's playing extremely well, and and uh, they're just really good defensively. And you think about Ole Miss, you think about offense, uh, and then you go over on offense, and they have Jackson Dart, who's who's really really good. Uh, Trey Harris, who didn't play last week, but uh, we're expecting him to to be there. Uh, this week, and then the running back has 650 plus yards. So, just a really, really good football team uh, that's very explosive. And, and like I said before, their defense is playing extremely well. We're looking forward to. I think the the house is going to be packed here on Saturday, and we're excited that the uh, fans are out out here supporting us and and uh, happy about that. Thank you. Yeah, Coach, uh, looking back at the the film, was there anything that jumped out to you that didn't during the game? And uh, specifically on defense, anything that you identified since y'all played so well up to that point? Well, there's, there's uh, um, you know, we had 11 explosives, which, you know, we've got to figure out. Some of them were on the bubbles that um, – uh, we've got to stop that. We lost contain on the bubbles, uh, which can't happen. It looked like, well, the safety's fitting in the wrong gap. He's not. He's fitting in the gap he should if we turn the ball back inside. And when we did land and, and uh, the linebackers ran it down. Uh, so that, there was uh, a problem there. We have to get that fixed. The great thing is we basically got seven turnovers. We had five and then, you know, the two fourth down that we that they didn't convert. So there is a lot of good things and those, you know, with the second play of the game where we get the sack fumble by Landon and then go score. A lot of big things that the defense did. Um, basically, in a nutshell, I didn't think we finished the game in the second half. Uh, where our tackling wasn't as good as what it had been in the past. A lot of that goes with Trey. Um, we didn't have as many guys around the ball. Um, you know, we've missed tackles in the past, but we've had somebody else clean it up. And so we'll go work hard on that. Uh, but I was very, very happy with the turnovers that they got and and uh, the two big fourth down stops that they that the defense got as well but um we gave up too many explosives so we've got to figure that out and a lot of that was either gap gap being out of the out of the out of the proper gap or our tackling so we've got to work really hard on that this week and any changes with personnel from this past week to now um I don't think so. I mean, uh, Kudis started. I think him and Blackstock will be there. Our tight ends are our tight ends uh, that played. Um, no, I don't think we'll uh, – you know, I think Jaquinta Jackson will be doubtful again uh, this week. I think Rodney Hill will be probable. Um, and Jalen Braxton will be doubtful as well. That's everything. Injury-wise, yes. Coach, was the transfer portal par partially responsible for the balance in the SEC this year? You have Kentucky going to Ole Miss winning, you know, Vanderbilt beat Alabama. I mean, do you feel like maybe that's helped balance the SEC out a little bit? I think so. I mean, um, first of all, I don't think any of us really, really know what kind of team we have until you get out there and play. And uh, because there's so – and it's not like uh, bringing in 25 freshmen. Now, you're going to bring in 20 or so. This is like bringing in 10, 15 guys that can change immediately because they're older, they've played. And so I do think that has a lot to do with it. I do. Is there any – I got a message this morning. You suspended two players. Is there any truth to that, Coach? 
No, they're not on the team. There was no suspension. They're 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 they're, they're gone. Yeah, they're not on the team. Somebody here. With Tyrus Washington and, and uh, Rams, yeah. all right. the series with Ole Miss, uh, that's been pretty competitive with you and Lane both at your spots, and you won the home games. What maybe stands out to you about playing those guys, and maybe the atmosphere and the rivalry, so to speak? I think it's a lot of fun. You know, we've we've had four games now, and and of course the uh, the first one was a Hudson Clark, you know, uh, three picks and seven turnovers. And the next one was I went for two and we didn't make it. And then the next year we gets us bowl eligibility and and uh, we 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 dominated that game from from the beginning. Uh, they came back on us in the second half. And then last year game was certainly a tight game with with I believe we were tied maybe in the fourth there and end up losing, but. Uh, all four games have been very competitive and and uh, um, looking for uh, the same type of situation on Saturday. Yeah, speaking of Hudson, um, so he started and he had – he was involved in two turnovers. I'm just wondering what your evaluation of his play was and what it means to have him back in the rotation. Well, um, he's so important to our team. Uh, as a leader, but also, you know, like you just spoke of, he can play so many different positions. Right now we feel like uh, corner is that spot because that's that's what we need. Um, probably need to play Jaheim Singletary a little bit more, which we, we will Saturday, but um, not necessarily for HUD. I'm just saying we, we need to play him a little bit more. Uh, but, I, you know, Hudson seems – always be around the football and and uh, a guy that we know that we can count on and we have a lot of trust and belief in him. Been here a long time. I guess, you know, another challenge, I think as Miss Ole Miss is right up there in number of sacks, you know, on defense. Just what are some of the challenges that the front's going to come across this yeah, week that are maybe different? Yeah, that's a good question. They're going to be big challenges. I mean, they're they're good. Every every spot up there, they're good. I mean, real good. And, uh, um, you know, some of that is, you know, we're going to have to run the football and uh, stay out of some long situations. We're going to have to play well at tackle, play well inside, which uh, we're playing better. Um, but uh, that is a big challenge for us. And, you know, we may have to throw a draw in there, screen here and there to try to slow that pass rush down, have different snap counts uh, because they obviously are very, very talented. I know it's different programs, different coaches, different rosters, but look at some of Boise State's numbers with Talon the past couple of years. Uh, the tight ends weren't really heavily involved. Has that? And then this week they catch four touchdowns. Has that been something – you've had to work with him on is maybe targeting tight ends or was this just a, a product of the matchup this week? No, I mean, if you look at it, most of, most of those plays with the tight end, they were wide open. You know, it was either, you know, the fourth and one, you know, pass to Luke, which was wide open. We had a couple of uh, roll passes, uh, naked rolls, uh, waggle rolls where they were open and, and, uh, uh, but, you know, Bobby and, and that's and the offensive staff specifically went to that because we felt like uh, they may be open. Sometimes it doesn't work out like you plan. But uh, now we know we have, uh, you know, Posca, it was really good to see. Uh, Luke has really, really good to see. Uh, we, we've always had good belief in those guys and they've been one in progressions several times several routes uh, for whatever reason, whether it be uh, protection breakdowns or whether it be uh, we didn't get open, uh, but we did on Saturday, and it was really, really, really cool to see that, you know, the tight ends cut four touchdowns. And how valuable was our dubs performance? Because I know Braylon had the big day. Yeah, but... big time. You know, that's, you know, as we know, our dub had a suspension, and uh, during that suspension he was – outstanding and then when he came back had a, such a great hard working attitude and for him to go get it right at 100 yards uh it was very very um fulfilling uh i'm sure for him but it was also for me and the team and and i'm uh, just really happy for him and he's he's a valuable part of our football team 
Uh, heading into Tennessee, Talon was hovering around 55% completion rate-wise. The past three games, all over 65%, up near 70. Just how have you seen him continue to develop efficiency-wise throughout the I season? I think, again, I think people around him have played better. And, uh, you know, when you run the ball and you, your play action becomes better and your time to throw the football and to get open becomes better. But I think he's just playing really confident right now. I think Saturday helped him as well. We ran him a little bit more Saturday than what, uh, you know, obviously our plan wasn't against Tennessee. We didn't want to, you know, he, he wasn't at full, full strength that, that game, but, um, I think his confidence is just going up and, and we're learning more about what uh, he can do, what he likes to do. Uh, but I thought, you know, just when you said that, I thought there was a couple of runs that, you know, he hit. And then I thought his pass to Jordan Anthony was, was really, really a, a really good pass there. And it's fourth and two that he made, um, uh, um, uh, fourth and two that he went 45 yards on, but we got the two yards. I thought uh, that was an outstanding play as well. But I think he's just playing really confident because of the guys around him, I think, are playing even, you know, playing better as well. And then the Ole Miss game is obviously always big for the Metcalf family. Just what have TJ and Tevis meant to you and to this program? Uh, they're doing a great job. Great kids. I mean, they're hard workers, great kids, good football players as well. You know, all those things. But, you know, mom and daddy – uh, raise them uh, uh, to be great human beings. They're great kids. And, uh, you know, obviously uh, had an opportunity to go in there and, and get them to come play for us, and I hope they have a great game. So if you look at SEC play, you all you won a game, then lost, won, lost. I'm curious, what, what's the key to maybe carrying over the momentum from this past game and you know, putting together, you know, back-to-back -back wins? Well, sometimes it depends on who you're playing, you know, um, um, matchups. Um, but I think um, right now we're health of your team. Um, but I think right now we're pretty healthy. Um, we have three in a row at home. We're not worried about the third, second and third, but we do have three in a row at home. Uh, early kickoff. I think it's just – uh, how we prepare. We're, we're cutting back not a ton this week, but a, a few minutes of practice trying to make sure our legs are there and make sure that we take the right guys to the party. And uh, we're very aware that, um, you know, in the past we'd been very good coming off of bye weeks and, and obviously got beat by LSU off of it. So uh, we're aware of this week's so important to us, and then we're aware that there's a buy after it. So we're taking just a little bit off of that to make sure that we're fresh. Um, but it's all about the preparation. And as you've seen in college football, I think most games are determined on who turns the ball over and who doesn't. And I think it's been that way forever. But this year it just seems like if you win the turnover battle, you win. And I'm not for sure it matters what – what the names of the teams are. And uh, so we've got to really concentrate on that too. And the one, you know, obviously I think we're five and zero oh and in games that we've had been even or, or won the turnover battle and we're zero oh and three when we lost it. So uh, we're going to harp on that this week as well. Give us a better chance to win. And with the two tight ends no longer being on the team, do you feel good that that has and Poshka can handle the workload there? Or do you foresee someone else maybe stepping up and having on a bigger role? Well, yeah, I, yes, I think I think they can, um, but you know, I have a lot of and Maddox has played Lester's played a lot of ball, um, so I have a lot of confidence in him. And uh, uh, then we we also got Josh Street ready when we were banged up a little bit, and and we'll have we'll have a few more ideas for for that position. But, um, yes, absolutely, I think they can, and, and I think they will, and I, I think they showed that on Saturday as well, and, and along with Lassiter. And I think Lassiter's role may uh, – we may have to give him a few more uh, responsibilities, maybe some online. You know, we haven't used him a lot there, uh, but – he, obviously, we believe in him because he's played a lot of ball for us.
You mentioned the importance of tackling well this week, Coach. Obviously, Ole Miss has a lot of weaponry with the different receivers and the big tight end yeah. and the running backs. He's a good uh, player, too. Yeah, and the, and the quarterback's a veteran, too. So and how, important is, how important is that to just tackle soundly throughout this game? I think it's important to play extremely hard and extremely smart. Uh, when we do that, we our effort hasn't really been a problem. I, I think um, – if you ask T. Will, myself, whomever, the kids, I think we lost a little bit of focus in the second half. Uh, you know, we haven't played with a big lead like that, and those are things we have to learn from. Uh, Hutch, like you're you're talking to me about, those are some things that we have to learn from, and hopefully we get a whole bunch of chances to learn from it. But uh, uh, you're right, they have a lot of weapons. Uh, we're going to have to break down on them. We're going to have to get a lot of guys around the ball because you can't just go, okay, we need to stop that guy. There's too many of that guys that you have to stop. So we're going to have to be really, really good on defense, really sound and run to the football. And the tackling, I think, will take care of itself. Yeah, Sam, I wanted to ask you a little more about Hudson. You know, that, that big game, the 2020, the three pick, I kind of put him on the map. Some guys are one hill wonders, but he's really taken that and, and carved out a really nice career. Well, first of all, what do you remember about that game and how cool it was? And then just what have you thought about how he's how he's built on that over the years? You know, I remember that he got his third interception and got up like that. I remember that. Uh, I remember that the game was pretty much in hand and, they faked the field goal was on me because we should have been in safe and I wasn't. And they faked, or excuse me, a punt. We should have been safe and they got it and made it a little more interesting. And then Grant Morgan picked the pass and scored. I, I remember all those things about that. And then I remember walking off the field and fans were crying. And there wasn't many because it was like seven to COVID, but they were crying. And I was asked Kyle why they were crying. He said, we didn't want an SEC game here for like two and a half years. I said, okay, well, I'll start crying too. I mean, it was uh, – but I remember all those things, and then I remember on Sunday I called Hud in, and 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 uh, he had earned that scholarship that we gave him, and was able to give him a scholarship. And how he's built on that, you know, he's he's carved out Really has. I mean, he's so valuable. He's because he know, like I said earlier, because he knows every spot in the secondary, and he's so valuable. And and we we have a uh, huge belief in him, and and he's earned. He's certainly earned that, and he's a good special teams player as well. We've kind of taken him off a little bit of special teams simply because uh, he got. You know, back back was banged up a little bit, uh, but uh, just you know, he him and I think Eric Gregory are the two, and I may have missed one, but I think they're the two that have been here my entire uh, career here too. They're actually six six year guys. Yeah, yeah. And then um, as I saw us on the SEC site, Talens and uh, and and Braylon both got co SEC. Player, offensive player, and, and running back. I guess it seems like Arkansas always has to do co stuff. I guess that's just the way it is. But just want to know your thoughts on those guys getting SEC. Yeah, that's it. really that's really nice. You know, I think they'd both tell you that they had to have blocking and they had to have catching. They had to have all that around them. Um, but for getting an individual award, I think they they would think it's pretty neat, and they'd tell say that the players out on the field helped them get that as well. But I'm I'm happy for them. And Dart, uh, putting up just crazy numbers. I think it's his third year now. So you've obviously seen a fair amount of him. Just what, what, what's your take I mean, on Dart? He's got to graduate sometime. He's got to get out of there. I think it's his last year. Just what, what are your thoughts on, this, on the season he's, he's had? outstanding. The, the, the thing that you don't really realize with him, oh, maybe you do, but his ability to run. I mean, he can throw. I mean, he's got Mahomes-like stuff in him. I'm not – I'm comparing the magic throws that he makes because he can make them. I mean, you're going, how do he shovel this? Uh, but he he can – where he's super dangerous as well is that he can run, and he's very, very competitive and very, very confident, and he's the type of guy you want leading, leading your program. Oh, I had a question about how Kudis and Blackstock graded out. Did both of them – how they contributed? Yeah, they both played well. Um, um, Kudis played a few more snaps than uh, Blackstock did. Both of them had great attitudes about their situation. As we're moving forward, we'll continue to evaluate that. But they both played well. I was um, 
Kudis played exceptional for his first game back. He he played really well. Uh, and I had another question about Jaquinnon. Is it is this? Would he have a chance to be back this year? And yes, like how, okay. absolutely. Yeah, and I think I think, I mean, if he's not back Saturday, uh, I'm very confident that he'll be back the the for the remainder three games after the bye. How much of a difference maker is it? Uh, I know Andrews had a great year, but when Talon's finding different receivers yeah. and getting everybody involved like he did Saturday. You know, how about the two-minute drive? I think he went to Tesla three in a row. And uh, I think – and, and Broden's catching balls that, um, honestly, he didn't earlier in the year. I mean, catching it and getting whacked and holding on to the ball and all that. So uh, – and then now you're adding in the two tight ends. Uh, we're running some flare uh, screen-type passes out to the backs. Um, and everybody's catching the ball well. And so I think, again, that – I think – to his question, I think that really builds up the confidence in the quarterback as well as the protection. But I think it's uh, a big deal that we can go to six, seven guys, Jordan Anthony catching football, which we had he hadn't done getting his first touchdown as a as a hog. So, yeah, I think all those things play into that. You mentioned last week that you would like to redshirt Kudis if possible, but as well as he played on Saturday, I mean, how, how do you have a plan for that? How does that work? I, I have a plan to play him four games. So we're going to try to play him on Saturday, and that'll be two. And then we'll try to figure that out. But the deal that we talked about was he wanted to redshirt. And I said, hey, now, we, we ain't trying to redshirt you for somebody else, you know. And, Said no, coach. I I would never. You know, I'm I'm a hog. I want to be here, but I also, you know, he kind of lost that freshman year in special team. Didn't lose it, but it was special team. Didn't play a lot of offensive line. This would be our way of getting getting that back. But we're gonna play him Saturday. How about that? And then we have two more opportunities to figure out two out of three. Yes, Sam. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Sorry, Bob. Sam on the. Who to steal or for anybody that matter? But is there a rule that he can play the if he played four games in the regular season? If he played a bowl game, would he be eligible to do that? Would not count against sure. your year? Yeah, and you know what's happened a little bit with the portal and guys playing with. You know, some of the bowls have been. Well, it's sad actually. You know, you got sixty guys and you got a quarterback out there number, you know, ninety seven. You know, is playing quarterback and and. Um, so, uh, I'm glad that they've given that back, but you have four games and then any postseason doesn't count, uh, towards, uh, eligibility, uh, as far as losing your red shirt. And, uh, so we're trying to, actually, we had six guys on our team to please don't ask me who they are because I, I don't know it right off the bat, but we have six guys that we actually talked about, like, and Kudis was one of them, but, um, uh, uh, Braxton was one of them. He's played in two, you know, when he, when he's able to get back. And so there was six of them that were going, okay, offensively, hey, Bobby, Eric Branham, uh, Kobe, he's played in one game now. He has an opportunity to play in four more. What do we want to do with him? Well, the answer is we'd love to have him come back four years. He's not going to leave us. I mean, he's an Arkansas kid, diehard, mom and daddy too. And so um, those things that we went over this week just to make sure where we were, and there's about six of them we have to make choices on. Just make sure I wasn't one year rule. I yeah. thought I'd remember that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it went in like uh, when we went to Liberty Bowl that year because I remember uh, we had a guy or two that was right there and they were eligible to play uh, in the game. And we needed them too because we were, you know, depleted. Sam, they got a defensive tackle, Pegs or Pegs. He had his five rushing touchdowns for Ole Miss. Um, yeah, I just wonder. Huge. Yeah, I was wondering. Do you have to devote some practice time? Yes. I, I just wonder, as a line guy, what 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 your take is on that? He's he's freaking good, man. He's big. He's skilled. Uh, I, I haven't seen this year if they've th tried to throw a pass with him, you know, back there. But I mean, that guy, he's got great hands because he can catch the snap, and once he gets motoring downhill, he's He's hard to stop, and I mean, what a great idea by 
um, their offensive staff uh, to get, use him because he's he's hard to stop back there on on short yardage. Games in Washington is that just violation of team rules? Or can yes. you shed any light on that? Just the reasoning. That I, yes. Do they have an option, option to no. come back? No. Really appreciate it. All right, go Hawks.